Uh, we're now live on air. Hello and welcome. Oh, hello and welcome uh, to Broadsheet on the Telly. Uh, my name is John Preposterous Ryan. You're very, very welcome. Uh, we we had Johnny there for a second. We just lost him, but we hope to get him back. Uh, a big hello to Broadsheet readers. Um, sorry, Kevin. Yeah. Um, hello. <laughs> there's some no, there's some uh, quite distracting noise that oh, oh I'm so sorry. so sorry not at all not at all stop now it's stop now um uh, hello to the broadsheet readers uh, commenters and all the trolls uh, a big hello to Stephen Garland in Longford I like hello. this going for gold moment yes <laughs> hello Steve <laughs> um, and we have we have an, uh, a, a lot of people coming in late. But we've, 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 we're starting roughly on time because we have Kevin Higgins back. Uh, Kevin, hello. John. Kevin is uh, wearing um, earphones that yes. aren't his own. They're Dr. Dre, I think, are they? Beats by Dre? No, no, I, I was going with Liberace, but uh, <laughs> feel free to. <laughs> okay, well, they're, um, they're borrowed earphones. Uh, Most certainly borrowed, yeah. Okay, and Kevin Higgins uh, was with us last week. He is the uh, lawyer. He advises um, survivors and members of families of survivors of uh, the two mother and baby home and other mother and baby homes in Ireland. And uh, Kevin, last week we spoke. Sorry, Kevin. I'm still here. Yeah, yeah there's, there's something you're doing that's sort of uh, affecting the audio. Okay, it's perfect. It's perfect now. Okay, sorry, okay. Kevin. I'll sit still. Yeah. No, um, just to give us a, a, an update, we didn't get, we didn't have any uh, visuals last week, but we had audio of you, Kevin. And, um, is it? I don't think it's me. I, I really don't. don't think it's me. Okay, could that be? Okay. So it's not the Liberace earphone, anyway. Okay. I I don't believe so. No. Okay. Um, well, Kevin, uh, the last time we spoke, Catherine Sapone had addressed um, survivors, family members, uh, and okay. Uh... <laughs> How about muting muting the microphones? Look, I'm going to pull this up. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Right. Perfect. Where we go with this then? Yeah. Um, so when we spoke, I hadn't actually read the speech that um, Minister Sapone had, had made at the uh, at this gathering. Yeah. And uh, you you got it up onto your website. Yeah. It's on it's on the network website. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, the um, uh, the Tomb Net, uh, Survivors Network site, isn't it? Isn't Home it? Survivors Network. That's correct. Home Survivors Network site. And uh, I have to say, the speech was just extraordinary. I, it kind of indecipherable. Um, she quotes Pro Proust. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm not even, even entirely sure what she wants out of out of the. Uh, does she want exclamation? I mean, it, it, it's not entirely clear. And uh, I, I'm just wondering what the reaction was from from people that night. Um. If there was one feeling in the room which uh, you could say prevailed, it would be anger, uh, mixed with a great deal of frustration. Uh, those would be the, the feelings which prevailed, um, I'd say, among among all bar one or two people. Uh, I've seen reports of that meeting, uh, which said there were 100 people there. Um, some said, uh, 200 people there. I would have said perhaps 250 people there in that room. I know, but I was sitting there and I walked around the room. So there were, I'm pretty sure there was about 250 people there. Two people uh, embraced the auction, uh, which uh, theoretically is on offer to just memorialize the site. Uh, the rest, uh, whether they were attached, you know, whether they were extended families of, of survivors or victims of the home, but they simply want the, the bodies exhumed. That was by far the overwhelming. To, to suggest otherwise, as some people have done, is absolute nonsense. And, and 
And Mr. Minister Sapone's speech, which is up on the, on the Tomb Survivors Network site, it, it, how did that go down with, with, with people present? Uh, I mean, did people understand what she was trying to say? Uh, I don't think it, the majority of people knew why she had why she was there or what the meeting was about. But I suppose uh, if, if a lead balloon can go down politely, that's how it went. Right. But again, to, as to her purpose, she said that um, that this was a gender issue. Uh, well, well, look. If I, I mean, I I spent a, a little bit of time. You've read you've read her speech. A gender issue. I suppose the mother and baby home um, issue generally is a gender issue, in that it was one of the the planks, uh, pieces of legislation in the creation of the misogynist state from 1923 onwards. So I suppose, yes, to, to some degree, it's a gender issue because um, if you look at the raft of legislation which the state created, the Irish Free State from that time onwards, you can see that the role of women is diminished uh, to virtually serfdom uh, incrementally. But isn't this... A, uh, the, the gender thing aside, isn't this a police matter now? I mean, surely. Yeah, well, uh, yes, indeed, of course it is. I mean, I, uh, the gender issue, uh, why she raised it, I have no idea. It, it, it's, it's a police matter only insofar as the police must act on information. Now, I don't have it to hand, uh, but there is an ex... Can I just go back to June 2004 for one moment? Sure. When... Um, Alison O'Reilly's pieces over three or four weeks in the Irish Mirror on Sunday, on the Irish Mail on Sunday, began to um, create such a, a hoo ha. Um, there were the chair at the at the uh, Department of Justice was held by Francis Fitzgerald, and the person who you know, whose department is now notionally in charge of this was James Riley. He was he had been moved from health and he was at the Department of Children and Youth Affairs. Um, he wasn't there when the story broke, actually, to be fair. He was there shortly afterwards. Charlie Flanagan was there. But within three to four working days, the first the first um, press coverage was 26, 25th of May, 2014. And then we had an announcement by Frances Fitzgerald that she had asked the Garda commissioner, Noreen O'Sullivan, to have the Garda carry a, to get a report from on Garda Siakona about the tomb site. So just, just consider for a moment, at that time in 2000, 2014, um, Frances Fitzgerald retained the services of Terry Prome yeah. of the Communications Clinic. Um, the um, Department of Children and Youth Affairs also retained Terry Prone. The Office of Angarda Commissioner retained the services of Terry Prone. And of course, as we know, the Bon Secours Order retained the services of Terry Prone. Rather interesting. Now, I'll tell you what happened. And if any of these lovely people want to sue me afterwards, not you, of course, John, because I'm entirely responsible for this and nobody else. What happened? 26, 27th of May, Francis picks up the phone and says, Terry, 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 this is awful. What will I do? Well, now, I'll tell you, Francis, you can't tell on Garda Shia Khan what to do. Therefore, you have no power to do that. So that, that would be... The separation of powers, you don't have that goal. But you could ask Noreen to, to talk to the guards and say that you've asked for a report. So that's what Noreen did. And two guards went down to Tume, two senior guards. They went onto the site and they walked up and down it for 10 minutes with um, Franny Hopkins. They went and they saw Catherine Corliss in her home and Catherine said, well, is there an investigation? And they said, no, 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 we're just here for a little chat. They did not interview many of the other people, including those who'd fallen into the pit. 
subsequently. And this report just disappeared until that stroppy git um, Philip Badger Hayes put in an FOI about <laughs> eight months later. Now, I have a copy of the response he got. I think there's about 17 names on the, you know, on the CCs and BCCs, or whatever. You know, you know the old joke about a light bulb and how many people. Mm -hmm. Are they all, all redacted with it? No, not at all. No, they're all sitting there, up like, you know, like uh, Aunt Sally's waiting for somebody to throw a coconut or something. But if you read that, it's the most execrable piece of PR bullshit you could ever possibly read in your it is think of the worst piece of PR bullshit you've ever seen in your life then double and treble it I will happily email it to you because um, you know if you ever need a purgative this this will work for you so but, I can can I just recap for a second okay yeah sure what's okay. gonna happen next no no I just oh. want to recap because I just want to establish something Terry Prone was advising Noreen O'Sullivan. She was advising Francis Fitzgerald. She, yep. she was advising the Bon Secure nuns. She, she yes. was advising uh, Charlie Flanagan, who was the Minister for Children at the time. She was well, also. Well, she had a contract with the DCYA. Whether it was with Charlie uh, personally, I don't know. The contract also, which she had, yeah. Sorry. the contract which she had with with Francis Fitzgerald was under this wonderful amorphous thing, the secretarial allowance. Yes. Uh, I don't, I don't want to, she had been, I don't want to nail Charlie, because Charlie's not going to sue you or me, I've known the guy for 45 years and he isn't remotely like his father. Um, but at the time that this blew up, uh, Terry was advising uh, and thereafter, and after um, uh, Charlie had gone to, I think, foreign affairs, and James Raleigh had been pushed over from health into uh, DCYA. Yeah. Um, Terry, at that point, post that period and thereafter, was advising James Riley in children, and as she had previously in health, uh, Frances Fitzgerald in justice, as she had advised her previously in, in uh, children. And she was, and as far as I know, continues to advise the Bonsecours group. Yeah. And um, just, just to extend this a little, little bit as well, then the, what, from what I could see in sort of real time what was happening, the story broke, as, I, as you said, with Alison oh. Wiley in the Irish Mail on Sunday. And it That's took, right. It took them about two, three days for the establishment, sh sh shall we say, to get their, their act together. And they came back very hard with Rosita Boland in the Irish Times and... Mm. Uh, I think Dermot Ferreter today with Sean O'Rourke. Uh, it was, uh, I, I think, was Rosita on today with Sean O'Rourke from from Tune, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't see that. I don't see that quite as an establishment fight back. To be fair to them, I really don't. Um, did you, did you feel it may that? look that way, but I, I don't see. I, I, do, I, I That's not my perception of well, what happened at that time. Well, if you take Terry Prone's letter for, uh, to Saskia Weber. Um, mm. And in it, she says, I can put you in touch with a few reputable historians. But also mm -hmm. her, her line, um, you won't find 800, you know, just, you know, they, they weren't dumb, you know, 800, 800 headlines saying 800 dumped. Her, her, uh, her spin, shall we say, mm. was adopted by a number of people, key people. It was. It was, yeah. media. <clears throat> Including Mr. Waters, as we know. Yes. And yes. David Quinn. Yeah. David Quinn, yeah. Well, let's, uh, let, let's hold off on uh, Waters and Quinn for a moment. And, sure. Um, so you, you don't feel that the, me the, the media were complicit in it either. You just feel that this was a, um, a, a prone operation for, uh, with, with justice and... and the yeah, by and large, yeah. Uh, I do. I don't, I don't think, um, in fairness, at that time, the information which came out was sketchy. Um, some people dealt with it quite luridly. Uh, there was, if you like, as distinct, I, I, I mean, forgive me, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of, of some of the arms of the mainstream media or people who work in this country, but I don't think there was any concerted attempt at that time to discredit the story. I think um, 
the attempts to discredit it were more insidious than that. I think. Um, did you feel Catherine Corliss was, was? Did you feel Catherine Corliss has been characterized as this amateur historian out of her depth? Absolutely, she was being she was being pilloried and treated in the most obnoxious way, um, both here and indeed from some commentators in the U.S. Um, I spoke to Catherine at that time, and I said to her, based on what I've read on these sites abroad in in America. Is that you? You, hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, we yeah, can hear you. Should, you should, you should sue the hell out of them in the American courts, uh, because I felt it was defamatory. Now she didn't do that because that's not in Catherine's nature. But um, what they did was not so much handle uh, the press coverage; they took over the process completely. Mm. Now. It is an absolute nonsense to say that the state and the various organs of the state were not aware of what lay be beneath the ground in Tune. That's complete nonsense. They okay. did know. Okay. Um, what they did not know until 2011 was some of the detail um, about the way in which the nuns uh, trafficked children and they did receive a huge amount of documentation in 2011 about how the nuns, the bon secours, in Tume specifically had trafficked children Right. and they decided to sit on that. Who so when this arose in 2014, the state had a problem. It had been sitting all on all this evidence from 2011 and now the thing blows, what are we going to do? So what you do is you take the evidence held by the HSE on one side and you leapfrog the public and you hand it over to a body, a commission investigation, whose deliberations and evidence taken is all in secret, in private. And in so that your public never actually gets to know what's what they've been sitting on. Okay, and then in the meantime, you just distract, you confuse, and um, that's right. You know, obfuscate whatever. It's not, yeah. it's not a septic tank. It's not a. It's a. It's a. It's a tomb. It's a. You know. It's this. It's that. It's. You know. Uh, they weren't discarded. They were placed carefully. I, I, you know. They chip the away at the story. Yeah. You know. There's okay. always going to be. You know. It won't be always a full frontal assault. There would be people who would vary who have the most. Uh, reasonable approach will come on and speak very softly and uh, say well maybe it wasn't true and you know there's a guy there is a guy who writes books um about religious themes and he's written a book uh among other things about moving statues and marian apparitions okay. uh he's a big fan of, of marian apparitions there's one housewife who whenever she's putting out the washing can hardly avoid seeing something Okay, but in well. any case, this, this individual has produced a number of books. Some of them are not, they're by no means ill written. But in the days immediately after uh, the major coverage of Tune, this guy was appearing uh, under a nom de plume on politics.ie. And the amount of academic and co or, or crypto or quasi academic material he was putting out to explain. You know how the horrible conditions in Tune were really responsible for the deaths of these people. It's astonishing. Now I know who the guy is, right? But that was the manner in which it was dealt with. That right. was how it was done. Okay, okay. Um, Kevin, just on uh, when you go up to Tune, right? And hmm. everybody now knows that there's uh, up to eight hundred, the bones of eight hundred children. Um, hmm. The causes of their death are, are, are largely unknown with exhumation and with modern technology they can establish causes of death and, absolutely and if it was absolutely there the, the technology is there it's been refined over decades and, and they can establish if there was foul play in any of these um any of these deaths i imagine i mean uh, broken bones etc i mean is that the fear is that what's at the heart here Absolutely, absolutely, and money. 
Well, to whom? Because well, the um, mm -hmm. well, they, they can they can uh, recompense those children who have survived, uh, who are coming out of the woodwork in ever increasing numbers. Okay, okay. Um, they can do a number of things. The Bon Secours, as you know, is the biggest private health um, company in this country. Yes. And I think probably the biggest of its kind in North America. Um, people talk about balance and the cost of doing this and you know the cost benefit analysis and should they be left there and all of that. In my view, the good sisters put the kids in the hole. The good sisters should pay to take the kids out of the hole and have their bodies identified, their remains identified. But if they, if they deny the very existence of this uh, grave, through the, well, that, through the spokesperson, uh, Terry Pohn. She said, you won't find any grave here. You won't find any children here. Oh, well, that's Terry, isn't it? Well, no, I, well, I mean, it, she's obviously acting on some kind of instructions from the from the mother superior. Just to, uh, as in relation to the Bon Secours, have they spoken out ever since? Since that letter? They have, they have. But let me go back before, before you think I'm too hard on, on Ms. Prone. Um, Terry responded, the letter, the email, infants email, which I in fact put into the public domain, which she sent to Saskia. Um, sorry, Kevin, can I just stop you there for a second? I just want to say, look, uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny and Stephen, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Oh, sorry, look, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Kevin from last week as well, and it's incredibly yeah. interesting mm -hmm. because we, we kind of, uh, you know, comes across, the narrative of this comes across to us as it just comes, you know, via the via media and stuff like that. Uh, I'd have a question: How many uh, survivors? How many is there a number on the amount of survivors that are that are that are living? There are a goodly number. Yes, um, there is a difficulty in that not all of them have felt able to identify themselves publicly to make themselves publicly known. But what is happening is in, in and not unsurprisingly, but people are coming out of the woodwork all over North America uh, in the past, when let's you say, say in the past six months. Who, who are they? Are like when you say coming up out of the woodwork in, in North America, are they what, the adopters? Uh, no, the children, children. The children, the, the, the survivors. survivors to America, yes. Oh, wow. Right. So, it, well, it's, it, 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 the, so, the survivors, the children who were sold to to people in America, and then you've got the relatives of the people who the children who were who di who died there, perhaps under unusual circumstances or neglect or are, are worse. In fact, my question is: there is a there is an incredible. It sounds like there is an incredible amount of direct testimony, witness eyewitness testimony to what went down here. On, as you say, in both in America and in Ireland, I mean, it is. Uh... Yeah. Do you, do you feel, uh, Kevin, that would be enough to take to the guards? No. I mean, uh, uh, that alone, the, the evidence that you have, the circumstantial evidence that you would have. Kevin? Sorry, John. Were you speaking to me? Yes, I was. Sorry, I yes. I was. I was going to suggest just to follow up what Stephen was saying. With with all the circumstantial evidence that you have, would that be not be enough to go to the guards with? Of of trafficking, uh, be it trafficking, be it uh, uh, neglect and and worse, disappearing. Oh right. Well, I mean, in terms of neglect and worse, we we have. Uh, when I say we, I I mean the very broad family of people um, who. Uh, whether their families were involved, the very broad people from all sections of society who have gathered together and coalesced to try and, and get some justice. So I'm not referring to me and a handful of people. Of course. Um, we know that the conditions in the home... Uh, were, we, we have first-hand evidence from people who were children there. Yes. Wow. Well, Peter, we have first-hand evidence Peter of neglect and hunger. Peter Mil Milrine, in the who, home. Who, who, who represented um, 
he was he was told he would put, put in a bag and thrown into a bog hole as a young boy he is that he has that memory is that right uh, kevin kevin sorry i'm still here yes yes yeah, sorry um i was just saying that you you represented peter mulrine who who has an account of that's right being threatened to be put into a bag and thrown into a bog hole yes yeah that's what happened to him in the setting in in which he was um as they call bordered out which was a form of fostering or informal adoption right because there was there was no legislative basis for adoption until as we know uh, the act of 1952 so you had children boys generally were sent uh, out of the home to farming homesteads all over uh, Galway and, and Mayo, and uh, there theoretically to remain until they were 16 when they would supposedly have some independence. Right. Um, in some cases, the placement of children, both boys and girls, into these homes was catastrophic beyond anything you can imagine in terms of not just hardship and hunger, but abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. Okay, that's... Um, it's outrageous. Yeah, sorry, Kevin. Please continue. No, I'm just saying that that, that, is, that is, is simply the case. That, that happened. I mean, you only have to, to read... I have read uh, some of the files of children who went to these foster boarded out homes uh, at the age of five and I've read the correspondence between the families uh, some of the families who adopted them and the health authorities and in some cases uh, it's quite clear nakedly from the, the handwritten correspondence that the families who took them in just regarded them as mere chattels and treated them very poorly mm. indeed uh, to, to, uh, to <laughs> As, as, as workers, is that right? Would that be right? Well, yes. I mean, um, my very good friend Peter Ryan will tell you, like, at the age of five, he was learning to say, hook and get up and, and to herd cattle, you know, at the age of five. And his own particular experience wasn't a very happy one. But uh, from what I know and what I have read and other children who were boarded out that I've spoken to now, some of them in their 70s, um, the treatment meted out to them was far worse than even some of what happened to Peter. Nice. It was horrible. And young women were, make no mistake, they were even more vulnerable. Nice. And the, the, the makeup of the, the Bon Secours, they're, they're a fr French order, obviously. Like yes, yes. Of, most of the, the nuns in Ireland are from French orders. Um, Many are, you're quite right, yes. After yes. The, um, I think uh, that's where they mm -hmm. came from. It's sort of like the, it was the, the, that's the, their exports right, uh, from France. Um, but... Right, um, the individual nuns, the individual nuns who who would have who the tomb community would have known, has any have any of those spoken? I mean, have you heard anything back from them? Well, some of them, the great majority. I don't think, I do not believe that any of the nuns who remained um, at the tomb workhouse are now living. I don't think any of them are living. But were, they, were they themselves uh, these particular nuns? Were they uh, sort of lower lower down the pecking order in terms of? I mean, what? what no, what, they, what, they, they were. What made them treat these children so abominable? They were nobility. They were nobility. You know, they were um, like the Sacred Heart. They were. You the, know, you know, okay, the Mother Superior might exercise. Um, fairly strong discipline over her membership, but um, the women of the home and the children of the home, they, they weren't fit to touch the hem of, of the youngest novice um, 
And these novices, you know, they, they would have been edu educated. Is, they, they would have been educated young women. Well, in theory, in indoctrinated. Theory, possibly, in in theory, every every bon secours nun was a trained nurse and or midwife. That's the theory of their order. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it, the, the doctor, you know, the Bodkin Costello, this chap we spoke about last week. Um, yes. He was the medical examiner there. Is that was that his title? He was. He was a medical officer. In, in turn, I mean, the man. <laughs> excuse me. The man had uh, been medical officer to the workhouse, which ceased its existence in 22, 21 or twenty two. And when the same premises became the mother and baby home, he became the medical officer there. And he remained there, I think, till 1952, when he was at a very advanced <coughs> age. Okay, so he would be the, um, the, the, the nuns slash nurses, as hmm. I guess, would have been attending him, right? He would have been the, if, the, if there would have been an illness, that, it would have been the dog, him and these nuns, right? Looking out. Well, I would have thought he his role would have been quite deferential towards the nuns rather than the other way around. Okay. And the other way around. And the other thing is, there's this joke, there's this belief. It's not a joke that the nuns somehow lived under the same roof as the women and children. They did not, of course. They lived in another part of the town, in the grove. Um, no Bonsecor nun spent a, a night under the roof of the home. Yeah. They had their, uh, I suppose, a small number of what you'd call trustees. This was a prison system. Right. And they had a number of trustees who, you know, uh, would beat the other women around the head if they didn't follow the, the orders handed down from the nuns. Okay. So it was very rigid, there was very rigid control, but the nuns just did not get their hands dirty, no. Not at all. Is there is there a consistency in the mother superiors in this entire period? Is there one? Is it, like it sounds to me like there must only be in the span of I don't know how long mother superiors stay in position, but it, they mm. surely span quite a few years. So how many mother superiors are we talking about here? I believe in the thirty six years of the home, I believe there were two. Two? How about that? Mm. And uh, do we know what, what became of them? Uh, well, they died. Uh, the nuns, quite remarkably, always seem to live to quite venerable ages. That's what uh, I would have thought. Yeah, and uh, the, the most, the one about whom most is known, like the second one, his name escapes me at the moment, was a Mother Hortense McNamara. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Hortense, which of course, you know, the French um, sort of uh, influence in the order. Right, right. And the, the other, the other nun, the other. Her uh, name the... escapes me just at the moment. I'm sorry, oh, but she, okay. she doesn't figure very widely in the story. Um, Kevin, just uh, just briefly, I I, I want to go back just to to, to Terry Prone because it, mm. that's it, but that's incredible. The uh, the fact that she was advising all these people. I also, she was also advising James Riley, um, and was a personal friend of James Riley. But um, when the mission to pray um, uh, payout to, Kevin, to Father Reynolds was made, yes, yes, he discovered that she was advising Father Reynolds mm. while her husband um, <coughs> Tom Savage was the director or to director general mm. of RTE. Mm. I just wondering, Kevin, you're, you're a little bit older than me. Um, Thank you, John. I, <laughs> I never got the memo about uh, Terry Brown controlling Ireland, but well, it obviously happened. But um, mm. how did you get away with this? That's a very good question. Um, you know, but I, I declare an interest also being a little bit older than you, John. I, I knew Tom Savage quite well. That's your uh, name. Who you know was uh, married to Terry Prone. Yes. Uh, Tom died a couple of years ago, I think. He did. Uh, and um, Tom, quite frankly, was the brains of that outfit. Okay. Make no mistake. Did an incredibly shrewd man. Um, I found him to be a delightful man. I liked him very much. 
but all the smart moves were made by Tom. Make no mistake about that. But yes, these people seem to have a bigger grip on um, on uh, the story than um, what's the guy who ended up in play? Max Clifford. Yeah, but yeah. but it's not, they, they control. They seem to control both sides of it, almost every big story. Yeah. Though. And it's and back, back. They're, they're allowed to, but what, what I find fascinating, and this comes right back, right back to the email you referred to. When she set that out, two things were very obvious to me when I read it. One, it was such a flippant off the cuff thing. Either she hadn't been properly briefed by her clients, the Bon Secours, and if uh, she hadn't been briefed by her client on something of such significance. She was bloody stupid to put that statement out. And if she had been properly briefed by her client, she should have known better than to put that out because this was going to come back and bite them in the ass anyway. Well, well Kevin, I hate, to, I hate to break this to you, but uh, we've we've been sort of knee deep in the disclosures tribunal of the last. Hmm. I know you have, yes. And there's a number of emails from Terry. Uh, her, she's called Tess, and she calls it signs That's office. That's right. Yeah. Um, a number, a number of emails to people, to Noreen, to Francis, mm. and, and the language, or the 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 tone is so glib. It's like mm -hmm. uh, Mean Girls or something. You know, uh, I don't know if you know that movie from the. <laughs> it's like a Valley Girl speak kind of. Yeah, or like. Uh, First wives club after too many drinks the night before, whatever you know. But yeah, yeah. no, but I mean, uh, it's so it's so at a level that's like uh, it doesn't sort of merit this. I mean, it's such a serious thing that we're you know, mm. the, the, you know, the, the smearing of uh, or the, the, the Morris McCabe, like just the, what was at stake there was so huge. Yeah, flippancy. But then the tomb letter uh, the, the, to, to mm. the email to Saskia is just. Like, I know, but, but have you noticed that over, say, 30 years, um, individuals whose names you have no difficult would come to mind immediately, who have said silly things, done silly things, gone on TV and made um, the most absurd statements, um, <laughs> how many of them, <laughs> with their trousers down around their ankles, have been briefed by Terry Prone? Well, here's the thing. I mean, we 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 have our own history, but the, 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 remember the the, the the biopic on on Charlie Hawley recently. I where, do. Yeah. Uh, she's mentioned, but not by name, and it's mm. going back to the Reynolds, uh, uh, the Sean Doherty. Yes. She coached yeah. Sean Doherty to spill yeah. the beans on Charlie. Meanwhile, Tom Savage was working with Albert. Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it I'm seems to me that her career, which everybody queues up to give her more money, but her <laughs> the net result of this career over three or four decades, it seems to me to be um, one catastrophe after another, punctuated only by a series of disasters, all for her client. But, but I remember P. Flynn. <clears throat> I mean, she, he was coached by Terry. Correct. You know? That's who I said would come to mind. Yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> a few more examples, but I have to say that in her credit, or to her in the, uh, I read in Ivan Yates's book that I mean she she created his broadcasting career. She, yes. she was the one who molded him. I actually do think he's a sort of he has an innate talent anyway. I think uh, I think actually whatever Terry does is is, 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 is but she has one one um, absolutely. Uh, Sterling quality, without which none of this could have been achieved, John. When you're explaining, you're losing. She's got a neck like a jockey's bollocks. <laughs> you know? On that note, Vanessa Foran, uh, <laughs> celebrity accountant, uh, live from uh, Crum Crumlin. Uh, home? No, no, I think somewhere in maybe down the country in Wicklow. Uh, on Fresh, yeah, British Bay. In British, live from British Bay, Vanessa Foran. Hello, Vanessa. Hi, everybody. Hey, Vanessa. Hello. We've been uh, talking to Kevin for the last forty-five minutes, and it's been fascinating. I, I hope uh, you. Can't... I missed all that. I I suspect um, Miss Terry Prone featured heavily. Well, it, 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 um, Kevin just. 
was a web that she was uh... well, everything is a web huh you know it's like it's incredible the um it's like this period in That's... irish history is just a web driven yes. by somebody kevin is that you the uber Johnny, is that okay, it's definitely not at this end because I've ch I've just turned off the mic and it's still repeating. So I'll turn off my mic. So maybe do a test through the mic. Kevin, what have I done? What have I done? You do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've been cloned, <laughs> prone. Yeah, stop now, but whatever was happening there. Okay, I'll sit back and then. Yeah. Have you got a pace? Kevin, have you got a pacemaker? No, it's one of the few um, things I don't have. What a mess if that's any help. <laughs> a very important question, uh, Vanessa. Well, it does, the signal might have been interfering with his mic. F fair enough. It couldn't. It couldn't be a phone or something. Okay. No phone. High levels of Viagra are also known oh, to cause. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Kevin, uh, I think we've, we've had enough of Terry now. We for no one night. <laughs> but it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I, I, Ke yeah. Kevin, have to admire what you're doing, and uh, it's like because. I came late to this story type of thing and you just arrive and it goes, I've been out of Ireland for a long, long time. You just, it's one of these kind of scratch the surface, surface of Ireland, horrible stories. And, and the fact, the fact that, like you said, that these people are all still alive and like, and they want something, they want everything that's, that's technologically possible. And, uh, you know, meanwhile we have the gobshite Alliance looking for granny grants for, you know, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Never end. Yeah. How, how in Stephen, Stephen, I don't want to waste your brilliant uh, wit on this bloody noise. Yeah, I know. Well, well, I um, well, I talk out no. and talk in. Not I, 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 okay. Is it Johnny? Johnny, would you just mute for I'll a second? I'll get to walk around here. <laughs> no, Kevin. mute your mic, Johnny, for a second. Yeah, there you go. So you're muted. That's it. I think uh, it might be Kevin's though. Kevin, come back. I'm going to see where my phone is and I'm going to knock it off. How's that? Yeah, that, that could, could well be us. Yeah. Yeah, because you're, it is. It's not Johnny. Johnny, you're okay. It's Vanessa. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Everybody's on a step except for Johnny. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you yeah. think it might be my end? I can turn off the mic again mm. and you can test Vanessa, it. Oh, no, you're not, Vanessa. It's definitely uh, Kevin, you know? The, the, um, Kevin, I just want to, I'm going to go back to you for a second, but quickly, um, Vanessa. Oh, that's, 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 that's definitely, that's definitely Johnny anyway. That's <laughs> okay. uh, Vanessa did a brilliant review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Viewers, seriously, this wasn't planned. <laughs> My yeah. dog is as good as gold in there. I have no dog. That's I'm a complete, not, I'm a complete pro. Yeah, I, 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 well, no, I'm no, the problem here. No, you're Johnny, fine. You are the problem, problem, but you're not the problem. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. <laughs> but some, if somebody knew, Kevin, I'm. I'm gonna. I might mute you, mute you for a second. One second. Go right ahead. How's that? Okay, I'm good. Testing one two. Yeah, you see the sound it's is definitely gone. gone. Yeah, it's definitely gone. It's definitely. What is it? Those headphones he has. Were they Bluetooth? Oh, no. It's no. Yeah. Turn off the head. Turn off the head. <laughs> Kevin. Yeah. The bug, the bug lawyer. You've the gone, bug, you've gone viral, Kevin. You've gone viral. <laughs> Kevin. What have I done then? What have I done? For God's sake! Like, would it, would it be, would it be easier if, if John would it make life easier if I just left the room? That's good. No, but, uh, no Kevin. Um, do you mind? Just, it's lovely to see you actually, because we we spoke through the blue the blue face last week. How are yeah. you? 
I'm good, thank you. But, but if I'm causing a problem, would it make life easier if I left the room? Too? No, it's great. No, you, it's actually, you see, the, I, something about those pink earphones, there was like... They're, they're all there, yeah. They were, they, uh, anyway, it sounds perfect now, but um, I just thank want you. to say that uh, Stephen has one man show that's going to Edinburgh. Um, Can I ask Dan? It's a woman, it's like a storytelling comedy show. Uh, Wonderful. He performed it in Longford. Vanessa went down to Longford and did a brilliant review and that's on today's website. Thank you very much, Vanessa, by the way. Vanessa, you, 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 there was a standing ovation. Oh, he got a standing ovation, he did, yes, full house. Amazing, <laughs> Amazing. and it was a great and show. This, it, it was, yeah, but it, this rack seating that he spoke about last week, it was actually really comfortable. It, I was expecting, you know, like bleachers at uh, a gig, you know, like say at the cheering gig, there are these kind of knitted together scaffolding with plastic seats on it. But no, they were like grand big comfy armchairs. It was very, it's like it was, a cinema. <laughs> and I, I noticed a typo actually in the um, in the piece this evening was uh, it's I, I, it's about Longford Slashers and the theatre next door to each other. About one couldn't could not live without the other. Not could right. live without the other. <laughs> but that I'm not a typist either. <laughs> because the theatre the theater is is next to the Longford Slashers. Oh, this is the same frontage, and you go in the same door, and obviously the the clubhouse bar is the same area, and it's so comfortable. And anyone who gets an opportunity to go to this theatre should go like even if it's just pantomime or whatever gig they it have, is they have really top shows all the time mm. their program throughout the year you'll have everybody down there you know you have the jewel company you'd have uh, everything will be there every touring show in ireland will stop into the backstage and it's a wonderful theater 212 seats to uh, very comfortable to enjoy anything so but what is the green room like Stephen? is this green uh... room, i've got a picture of the green room actually the only one of the few pictures i have but it's a uh, uh, it's one of the most expansive green rooms i mean it would literally it's a uh, snoop dogg style where you could accommodate quite a quite a bevy quite a crew in there, you know, which I, I had, I didn't, I wasn't prepared for such a green, green room, or else I would have obviously organized my crew. Um, are there, are there, are there post-disposed groupies now, uh, Stephen? Uh, not yet, but we're working on that. And uh, once we get back from Edinburgh, and uh, yeah, look at um, when do you go to Edinburgh, uh, Stephen? I go on, I'm, I'm going on the 17th. I'm only going for a week because uh, I'm still in a kind of energy management zone. You know, it's like I'm technically convalescing. I'm yes. technically disabled. I'm yeah. technically a lot of things. And yeah. uh, it is quite demanding to do to do these things still because uh, energy wise, you know. So Stephen, we, Stephen Ke Kevin, uh, sorry, just because uh, Kevin, uh, Stephen is on a course of stem cell. Well, well was, was on a course of stem cells in Moscow. Just do it one time, one hit, yeah. 30 one hit. days. He got 30 days of stem cells uh, put into his body, infused with stem cells. And uh, we interviewed Stephen maybe five months ago, and he didn't look like he does today. It's, it's, an, it's, it's really incredible. It's wonderful. It's miraculous, but it's really up there. My it? new hair, Kevin, you know, it's all coming back. Yeah. It, it, and he just he was a, 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 a balding person then. It's clearly Sorry. about well he was quite shook at the time. Do you remember you, you were lying down all the time, Stephen? Sorry, Kevin. But I'm just saying clearly the, the, the Russian Republic is way ahead on this and we should be pursuing a, a policy as adventurous as they are. It's one of the layers of the show. I have a kind of theme that runs through it. Uh, taken from the Monty Python famous sketch, what what uh, what did the Russians ever do for us? It was <laughs> in the Python sketch. It was obviously Romans. So mm. I've got an, an under an under uh, and a like a, a a joke, let's say, running throughout the show, which is what did the Russians ever do for us? Because a neurologist, because every neurologist I met along the way in Western medicine, wherever the West is, because I've spent lots of time out of the West, mm. and uh, it's like. Um, we get a narrative here in Ireland because we subscribe to this Western narrative no matter what. And that's what I feel at least. And um, every neurologist I came across, one described it, one of the most famous in New York and Mount Sinai, described it as a scam. And a scam is a very strong word in my book because that's 
implying it's dishonest. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I've had other some of the most uh, other famous neurologists in the world say mm -hmm. that it was um, uh, that you don't. What, and that one of them gave me the gave me the that that hashtag because he said, "Ah, oh, Steve, what are you going doing that? It's like, what are you going doing that for? What did the Russians ever do for us?" Yeah. <laughs> Inter internally, I thought cataracts, face. A, yeah. bunch of, a bunch of stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because and, uh, during the Soviet Union, they, um, because their research was not uh, profit-based, they were researching really interesting stuff. I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, medical papers uh, uh, um, from the Soviet Union that are really quite... They were 50 years ahead of, uh, ahead of the US in cataracts, for instance. My dad has cataracts. Right. An awful lot of people have cataracts, you know? It's okay. like that was uh, uh, Soviet technology, like you're, like you're saying. So uh, uh, it's absurd to say that to, to have a completely anti-Russian nar narrative, you know, b b because it's built on a, a kind of politics that's gone through a Cold War and a few different things. But culturally, you know, they gave mm -hmm. us ballet, they gave us an awful lot of, they gave us Tchaikovsky, they gave us uh, Dostoevsky, the literature, yeah, you know, so well, much. Just, uh, just on the stem cells, um, and Kevin, perhaps, uh, you know, we're talking ethically about if stem cells were around 50 years ago, they would be would they'd be getting the stem cells from these kids, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, wow, well, of course, Didn't wow, say yeah. That. Well, yeah, yeah. I did autologous, and this, but this is the thing. To be honest, in medicine, uh, stem cells are the future for so much, and they are, they are the FDA are getting in, getting in the way of all this. There's a there is a clinic of a, of American uh, um, American uh, doctors who are uh, basically they're working with umbilical stem cells. I did autologous means that it was my own stem cells that was used to reboot my own. A neurological uh, system, mm -hmm. and uh, but to be honest, in Panama, in Panama is where this uh, may, it, it was featured, big featured famously with because Mel Gibson was on a Joe Rogan, you know the Joe Rogan podcast. Yes, sir. Mel, Mel Gibson featured in with one of the doctors from the the Panama stem cell, and they have it down. They're they're, they're getting it into a kind of injection. Mm -hmm. Everything in terms of every single sports injury. Every single thing, rejuvenating your cells to to get to get rid of. If you, in the case of MS, uh, what's happening is your own immunity system is attacking your, uh, uh, your you know, you're losing your myelin, myelin by and so the the, the situation is that the only thing that's stopped. Why are these dudes down in uh, this clinic down? They're all American doctors. Why are they in Panama? They're in Panama to stay out, to get out of the jurisdiction of the FDA. And so, but at the same time, all the MMA fighters that you know, MMA fighters are uh, are literally going. Joe Rogan is an MMA fighter, and he's uh, and he's done stem cells down in um, umbilical stem cells, which are the best. Okay. The, the, the fetal ones are the real um, ethical issue situation. The neurologist who said this is a scam. Did you? See does he say your hair is a placebo, like the hair growing back and, and, and the way you look and the way you well, feel? Well, this is just chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so basically, it's like it's, there's no big pharma conspiracy. I'm not, gonna, I'm not painting anything mm -hmm. about big pharma conspiracy because at the end of the day, I'm using the drugs mm -hmm. that are, uh, we're using key. What, what happens in the, the therapy that I did was a, 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 a real uh, deep concentration of chemotherapy within a, within a period of, uh, a short period of days mm -hmm. and uh, and then so they're completely you know you're I had for a period I had no no immunity mm -hmm. it's a very dangerous period because like a flu will kill you yeah. or any kind of bug will kill you, kill you. Yeah. so they don't they don't let everybody do it and uh, but the thing is that uh, uh, if you're fit enough and you're you're accepted enough this 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 clinic this guy this Dr. Dennis Fedorenko in Russia has done 900 transplants you you go into any kind of clinical trials for anything it's like 150 people something like that it's not 900 it's not over 10 years 
not over 12 years. I went into him and I said, because there's a kind of thing you do in the kind of, you do three days of severe testing to, to, to see if you are able. And if you, and it's like the man from Del Monte, he say yes, before you go forward to the next stage and you start, and you start, uh, begin the treatment and all of that. So it's like only when you get to that uh, stage, uh, are, do you pass money? So it's like for the guy to call it a scam in yeah. America, because this is some of the best care I've ever seen. It's it, we're almost like a cult. Everybody who comes out of this place are like a cult, and they're they're non they're a non drug doing cult because every one of them goes in with drug modifying drug. They're like generally, uh, MSers are uh, eighty percent, eighty five percent relapse and remit. And there are people who you all know. There's nine thousand them here. Well, there's nine thousand MSers in in Ireland, and eighty five percent of them are relapsers. Mm -hmm. And so they are all uh, look. They drive cars and they do their jobs and they do all the rest and they live quite normal lives. Yeah. And uh, but they are not well people. They're, they are taking an injection every day, possibly every other day. My sister in law has MS and she's injecting every day or every other day. Mm -hmm. So they're drugs that they're injecting. Yeah. It's one of those injections. Injections cost about a grand, a thousand dollars, something like that. Really? And, yeah, so how much does that cost a year? And so everyone that goes to Russia and comes back, not needing a single injection anymore, for a start. Okay. So I said that to the guy the first day when I went into for him, into this man from Del Monte meeting. I said to him, I said, "What's it? Why am I here? Why?" And in there's people from everywhere in the world, Australia. Uh, Canada, all the, the, the kind of band across, uh, it's the, the, for me, it's Celtic genes is the big part of the, where this goes down. I mean, who, why would everybody kind of goes, well, there's none in the tropics, there's none in Japan, there's none in, there's none in, in these different areas. But in the end, where is it? It's everywhere where the Celts went. It, so it's not about vitamin D, it's not about sunshine, because Australia has a massive issue. And uh, so... You know, it's like, so it doesn't take me to, because uh, they draw, like, scientists and our Western medicine draws the conclusion that yeah, mm -hmm. it must be uh, vitamin D and it must be this. Nobody ever says, look, at why is it not the Celt, why is it not the, the movement of people in history? Because that's where it turns up. Celts or Vikings or whatever you want. Northern, mm -hmm. ra Northern races. That's where they are. Ca Canada, massive issue. Norway, all the way across the Scandinavia, and then Australia. Stephen, if you if you hadn't taken the stem cells, would you be on very expensive injections? I'd be in a wheelchair, John. And I and I have a, a thing in the show, a slide, because it's an audiovisual show, and I have a slide in the show which was which, despite all my highly learned uh, neurologists that I had over the period of uh, trying to find a diagnosis, I had uh, many MRIs. I had so many MRIs. And uh, and I've never seen nobody ever pointed out to me one MRI of my spine, which had in in the in the in, in the area of the thoracic, which is the area that controls your mobility. And so and next, you can see it. He put. I couldn't get over it. He he put. I have the picture. I put up on the in the slide in in the in the in the theater, and everybody can see it. I kind of go that white thing. That's a lesion. And that's in my in an area that that is directly connected to where my mobility, and mm. and basically he said if that thing act, if that was to activate again, you're in a wheelchair. And what he said was you walked in here, so you're. Uh, he said we got you in time. Simple mm. as that. Yeah. And I've since then had people come to me because I'm a little bit public about my thing, and PPMS has no treatment, no cure. Yeah. They will ask you to wait for mm. drugs that are have a, drugs that come with almost like a press release. I'm a promoter. I make I write press releases for comedy shows for for mm. artists. I do it all the time. That's what I do all the time. There's a kind of language you create around press releasing, yeah. and uh, but the when so when a drug appears as a press release, you go that's a press release. You know, there's yeah. words like landmark. It's like I see it breakthrough, a triumph. You know, it's all that. And I'll, I'll, I'll see it over in Edinburgh, the greatest marketing uh, t uh, concentration camp of marketing in the world because there's 3,000 shows trying to fight for people to, go, to come in. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, the average uh, attendance is only 14. Then there's l- lots of shows that have 800. And Jason Byrne would sell 840, 21 nights. But there's mm-hmm. lots of shows of only 10 people in there. So everybody's fighting for every bum on, the, bum on a seat. Yeah. And, yeah, so the point is that uh, the, there is a drug called okra. Okra uh, uh, kind of arrived uh, and... The, and I was told I had uh, doctors in uh, in uh, in Barcelona, and they were kind of saying, "No, oh, there's something. It's a, it's a little bit drama, dr- uh, drastic to do HSCT, uh, and you need to wait because there's great drugs coming around." And that's like, man, you know, the, these people are the front line of the drug industry, and uh, who sells? Who do, who who decides what is a landmark drug? And my wife has been a conference manager. In, or she's been a conference center manager in in Brazil, and in Natal, where which was a host city uh, in the World Cup, but she was the Natal con- convention center, and their bread and butter of that convention center was medical conferences, and people coming from all over the world for medical conferences, and that's where that's that's the sales, you know, yeah, and that's yeah. where the landmark drugs get uh, pick up their. Uh, Pick up their sa- their salesmen. And do you reckon in, in within a few years that you get, getting the stem cells will be much cheaper, much easier for you? It, it should at least be done. It should at least be accessible. It's been done in St. Vincent's for cancer. It's nothing. It's just it's a different protocol, maybe slightly different protocol for MS. There's different protocols. But like I said, this guy has done 900. He's lost two patients in 900 transplants. That's a good I, ratio. Yeah, and that's the, and that's what he tells you. He said that uh, he said unfortunately, and I've ne- you've never met. But there's also a thing where uh, what what this guy does, Federenko out there, he buys. He just he buys you. And he has to, you have to buy, and you can see what he's doing. You have to buy the patients into a kind of uh, scenario that they have to believe, and they have to be uh, their positivity and their kind of because it's, it's, this is diffi- difficult treatment. You have to get through it, and. Uh, you know, Sorry. there's no, uh, and his thing is, you don't come here, do this, and then lie on your back and expect to be better. Yes. What, yeah, what he's saying yeah. is, we'll, we'll stop your disease, and you go out, you leave here, and you won't, protect, you, you won't need drugs anymore. Well, he must be very impressed with you. Um, Vanessa, um, the show was great, was it? I really enjoyed it anyway. Um, so <laughs> there was an innovation. And we kind of, I mean, people seem to enjoy it. Do they? Other people? Yeah, but they, they did. But I suppose you have to give it a health warning there because most he was related to a good few of them. <laughs> so there was a, a, probably an obligation. Um, but it, it was. It, I thoroughly enjoyed myself in Longford. And if, you're at the, if you're at the fringe, it's definitely definitely want to see, is it? Well, I think if it's. It, it, the lads were saying it has to get cut back to 50 minutes so it's not going to cost anybody anything really to give give the show 50 minutes it's also for, free uh, well it's free so it, it's 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 a great use of an hour That's if I could sell it honest, that way. To be honest, I see a real good show here John you know I'm kind of knocking around comedy and stuff like that a long long time and there is a very good show a strong show here and it's uh, it's about you. It's a challenge. The challenge is about controlling the tension in the room and things like that. And because it gets more, I have to. I have a slide that I put up about this thing about the limbic. Uh, the, oh yes, yeah. The, the limbic zone in the in the brain, which uh, which is your emotional intelligence. And to be honest, it's one of the it's one of the killer, ir- most irritating side effects of. Not side effects. It's a it's a symptom of of MS that that we kind of suffer from, and I suffer from it because, and I still do. I mean, I've 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 stopped the disease, but it doesn't. The damage done is still the damage done, and this one is the most ridiculous one because it's your emotional intelligence, and I can't control my emotions. And so, you could you cry? Uh, yeah, ridiculously. <laughs> <laughs> I he had us all in this. <laughs> and that's what happens in the show. And so I, uh, I'll, I, and now I, I understand. And that's what the sh- that show gave me was because I understand that when I, when I go to it, was I have to put up that limbic one and explain it that this is uh, when I hit things, I can hit triggers inside this show that I'm gonna, f- I'm gone. 
-hmm. and uh, so the crowd and then mm -hmm. i'd have cheers of drink more whiskey i was i had, a, I had like a sitting room uh, a sitting room oh. scenario uh, you Dave Allen, you had a few drinks on the on stage. Yeah, you have to, uh, glass it's actually funnier than Dave Allen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 how much of the, it, it, it is it is it improvised? I mean, I know you have a lot of jokes in your head, but then you just go with it. I'll tell you what, it'll get funnier, and and that's what I want it to be. I want it to be a comedy show that has that has these layers and has these layers that are real layers. That uh, there's layers of xenophobia. And there's mm -hmm. layers of uh, denying people information that they should be entitled to, and mm -hmm. that uh, there's layers of I had to, I mm -hmm. had to stumble across this. Mm -hmm. I had PPMS, the entire medic Western medical industry, from mm -hmm. uh, and I call it an industry because it's that's what it is. It's bottom lines and and sales and it's all the things that goes into an industry. And mm -hmm. uh, I had from Mount Sinai on Manhattan, you know. That's a pretty prestigious hospital. And I had a guy over there telling me that, no, oh, don't do this, it's a scam. My, and uh, right over to Barcelona, uh, uh, what I called him, the old, like, I was told that the guy I had was number six in the world. And this is one of the jokes that I made, because I mean, there's, a, there's charts. I've got <laughs> yeah, there's, there's neurological, there's neuro, neurologist charts. And to be honest, the best neurologist, I, and I've been through the story spans several countries, and and the di search for diagnosis spans a long time. It's, it spans continents. It yes, goes exactly. from Europe to well, South America to the, Russia. The review is up on the thing, and we've got the poster there as well. And we, uh, we, I'll give, we'll give you the details in a second. Before mm -hmm. um, Kevin, I, I don't want to sort of keep you for the whole for the whole. No, absolutely. Whole Sorry, run. but Kevin. Um, That's uh, amazing. I Oh, way, sorry. The, actually, sorry. Can you can you hear me, Kevin? Yes, I was just remarking just how astonishing Stephen's story is. It's it's so encouraging. It's so absolutely wonderful to hear that he's 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 done this. It's 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 great, and we and, and we've seen him like he's uh, Stephen's been with us. Uh, we've seen him at his lowest point. Yeah, when he was yeah. literally horizontal. I mean, we couldn't. Uh, the week before he flew, he went to Russia actually. And yeah. um, it's been a trip, you know, and uh, and that's that's what the this the, the storytelling is essentially. It's designed to entertain, but a, a little bit enlighten as well, and a little bit uh, create the empathy that people need to kind of uh, look, look look beyond the narratives. And if you don't cry, you'll cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's guaranteed, you know? and uh, it's quite funny. Um, it's quite funny to be encouraged by the audience to, you know, when you, cry. When you, no, but when you know that you're well and to go drink the whiskey. I had a I had the whiskey on the table in front of me, and they're going, "Go drink a whiskey." I know, drink and we're all dying for a drink, and he's there sipping away. <laughs> and Vanessa, did, did you cry, Vanessa? No, I don't cry. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> But you feel, I did you feel see eyes. Did you feel something? Were you moved at all? No. I was. Oh. I think I was moved by Stephen. I think rather than, the, you know. She fancies me, John. I think that's. That's <laughs> fair enough. Um, Kevin. 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 Sorry. Kevin. We're, um, yes, John. We were we, we were going to cover what what next now? What happens next? In respect of tomb. Yes. Yes. Well. Um, it's a standoff position. Um, the government, you're well aware that Zapone is maintaining this line that there will be a government decision as to how they deal with the site and how they resolve the issue, whether they cover it with daisies or whether they cover it with concrete or whether they take up the bodies or whatever. All, all position, and I say that from the point of view of those who wish for some vindication from the Joneses. That is not going to happen. It's not going to happen in the first instance because neither Zapona government has the power to make that decision. Um, as I've alluded to in the past, the primary um, responsibility and indeed uh, jurisdiction of the site lies with the uh, local coroner and where he doesn't do his job, um, the Attorney General has the 
complete power. It's, a, it's in the sole discretion of the Attorney General, not the government, but in the, in the Attorney General themselves to replace that coroner. Now, I think you can probably guess what's coming. <laughs> We're not going to let that happen. No. We will, by a variety of actions, whether it's seeking uh, uh, a, an order of prohibition to prevent the court from uh, sanitizing the site, or whether it's an order of mandamus compelling the, the existing coroner or the attorney general to act. And I'm sure I'm not, I mean, normally you don't tell the enemy what your plans are. I mean, it's not like the Falklands, uh, John Knott says, uh, we launch a, um, a surprise attack in three weeks. Yeah. The ships um, They know what we're going to do. <laughs> and we're going to smack the hell out of it. Yeah. And uh, look, I mean, if, 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 if they choose the option of concreting over it, that's not going to happen at all, is it? I mean, no. The, no, it's not. That can't happen. Come on. And um, they, they don't really have a choice here. They think they have a choice, but they don't really, do they? Well, I don't believe. I think the current Attorney General, Seamus Wolf, sorry if I cut across somebody there. No. Uh, he's no fool. He knows. He absolutely knows. Uh, he can't do this. He sits at Cabinet with these people. Um, I would say the biggest casualty of all of this is going to be Catherine Sapone. Yeah. And I really do. Um, she may be on the fifth floor of the book repository. Now, if she told us who was on the grassy knoll, then maybe she could save her skin. But I don't think that's going to happen. Well, yeah. Well, we spoke about, about um, uh, Minister Sapone last week in terms of uh, I, I assumed that she would be great news for the tomb survivors. And I thought that uh, not just because she was a woman, but I, I had no idea that she had a kind of convoluted sort of sense of logic about stuff but her speech really is is well, well worth reading just to, to to sort of look inside the mind of this person it, it, I, i'm not really entirely sure where she's at at all or um, he knows away with the fairies john well i'm beginning to believe that i don't know i mean i, I, I also would have thought it was, it was quite condescending or insulting to she you know, she she has been very disappointing as a minister overall i think yeah but why so i mean well, yeah it, 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 she's not visible she's not vocal um are these you know, when, when, you, when you think that kate mcconnell is sitting on the back benches it's, well she seemed she seemed, doesn't I, add up i said to you last week kevin that she seemed very empathetic with before she became minister i think she seemed her her own personal story seemed interesting. She had struggled a lot with, uh, you know, being accepted. I imagine and uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You so, know, I, 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 she has life experience. And then uh, and also she's uh, aligned with Una Mullally at the Irish Times. Uh, you know, this is very much she. Contrary she to what be, she's doing a tomb, right? Sorry, John, but she should be a lot more visible and vocal about a, a whole range of issues that are on that are in her remit and we don't hear a word from her yeah but just on the we, we hear nothing from her but just on the, on the, on the stick by tune kevin that you would expect but i would expect i would expect her, but you know i mean she is uh, uh, even though as you've kindly pointed out john uh, i'm somewhat older than you um <laughs> just you, you, yeah. you probably remember um Dennis Howell. Do you remember um, a, a Labour minister in the UK called Dennis Howell, Minister for Sport? Yeah, I remember. Yes, I do, actually, yes. Yeah, Minister yeah. for Fun, wasn't well, he? Or? In a way, Minister for Children and being handed to him is a bit like one of the things that happened 40 years ago when, when um, Dennis Howell was Minister for Sport and there was a drought in the UK. He suddenly became Minister for Drought overnight. Okay. Um, <laughs> In a way, you know, Catherine Sapone is our minister for drought. Um, she can do nothing about it. Um, it she isn't going to bring any change out by a rain dance. Um, Couldn't she be very clear and say, my, my personal wish would be that these bodies were exhumed and we could find out exactly, establish the cause of death and who they are and give them a proper burial. 
Why she can't you? She has by and large said that, John. Yes, I know, but then she, she, it's it's in this sort of uh, porridge of pro weird pros that doesn't seem to sub clauses yeah. and well, so she, she backtracked a, a bit, if if you don't mind me saying. She sort of. Well, I, th I think she's come to realize that she's essentially powerless in this. Also, I don't think she could possibly be that foolish. Um, I mean, she was left in that position when when there was a reconfiguration of cabinet. Sim sorry, Max. Oh, simply sorry. because um, simply because. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Sorry, John. Uh, oh, simply sorry. because nobody else wanted that poison chalice. The tomb. You mean? Yeah. Yep. And I can understand why, uh, because it's whoever is holding that brief is it's going to go sour on them. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because they'll be just sabotaged from within, like within, within either cabinet yeah. or for the service. Yeah. And, okay, okay. I mean, you might have to look, John. There's a large part of the, uh, of uh, there is still um, a segment of the Catholic Church and quote the laity, who still act daily as apologists for this and yes. seek to diminish every aspect of it. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had, we haven't had the time to go to, to go through John Waters' uh, speech, which which there was I shouldn't no worry about that. John. <laughs> but there's no record of it in uh, at the, the speech he gave at Notre Dame. But we'll, we maybe talk about it. I'd love, we'll maybe to come back, Kevin, uh, if you can, if you could. Be, uh, can uh, I ask Kevin something? Please, please Johnny. Hi, John. How are, you doing? How are you doing, Kevin? Thanks very much for the last two weeks. Um, oh, it's a pleasure, John. Was, was on a, she was on a few months ago. I think it was in April, the start of April, and she was absolutely fantastic as well. Catherine. I thought what she said that night, yeah, what would have been picked up. But it, it, this is something that they want to bury, the government yes. and the media. And mm -hmm. when Catherine was talking there two weeks ago on the national radio, she just said, it's a moral issue. This mm -hmm. is a moral issue. And if you think morally, you will get to the bottom of this. You know, there's no real thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I had a, a program last night, Spotlight. I, I heard it was a good film. And it just came on, RT. And I know it was dramatised and all that, but it was it was about the, the pedophilia within the church in Boston. Yeah. And it was uncovered by the Boston Globe. And if you were to reverse that into Irish context, the, the film would be the media, the shame of the media covering up a story like this, rather than uniting to say, let's just take on this establishment. Uh, or or this, this tool of the establishment. And that's what the, the clerical uh, uh, establishment seems to be. Um, how important it is in, in relation to government uh, agencies or, or governments essentially. Uh, how much power do they have with the Pope coming over and all that? No, but yeah, what, I'm really trying to get to, what, what I'm really trying to get to, Kevin, is I don't know if this could be an isolated incident or do you have any, any, any information or news to go on that there might be other similar uh, inst institutions where... Uh, uh, th th this happened as well. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, in my view, the most effective journalist or a commentator or person who has made the most effective contribution to all of this is unquestionably Conal O'Farda, uh, who works for the Irish Examiner. And Conal was knee yeah. deep in this stuff for a long time, long before the tune story broke. Yes. Uh, and his work is absolutely immense. No, the, to, to answer Johnny's question, no, there's nothing, there's nothing isolated about this. Can I, can, can I just, uh, Kevin, can, I just want to establish that. That's, that's Colin O'Farta at, at the Irish Examiner. And then you had yes. Alison O'Reilly and Neil Michael at the Irish Mail on Sunday. Isn't that right? Um, Alison's, Alison's contribution, which I would never, ever for an instant um, uh, seek to diminish in any way, Alison is an old-fashioned good journalist in, in, in the true sense. She sees a story and she realizes the significance of it. And that's what Alison did. Um, Connell's role has been different. He's been carrying out a war of attrition with the state bodies in terms of FOIs and pummeling them for about 10 years now. Wow. Um, he hasn't had, well, the, some of the stories he has printed, in my view, were every bit as big as Tune. 
Yes. But, you know, a headline that says 800 bodies in a septic tank, even John Waters is right about that. That gets it up there. You know? It does, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It does. And um, so, uh, well, that's, that's great. And he will, I mean, he'll, 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 get his, he'll get his credit. The story's not over yet. That's the, that's no way. No. By long John, term. I don't expect, I, don't, I, I expect the story to outlive me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you think is, put, the papal right. visit, Johnny mentioned it there, <laughs> is the papal visit going to, uh, is it going to affect this story in any way? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a big moment in Irish history. Mm-hmm. He's only up the road. Yeah, it, well, it's I mean, Kevin, the, like. Yeah. Anyway, uh, do you hear? Did you hear that, Kevin? Which is the Pope uh-huh. visiting John? Would 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 there be some sort of uh, recognition of the Pope's visit by by the tomb survivors? Or a uh, I well, it's it's difficult to say. Um, from, you know, for me, I can only talk about me in in a way. I mean, if the Pope was going to. Um, to tune, I wouldn't turn up any more than the boat going to the Phoenix Park or whatever. I've absolutely, I've absolutely no doubt that some people would turn up at the site. Uh, what I can guarantee you, and I'll put the house on it, the Pope ain't going to the site in tune. No, no, no. no. Uh, um, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us again no. this week. Really, it's been My fantastic. Pleasure, John. The yeah, pink earphones, much, everything is Good night, it's, it's, Good night everybody. Take care. And, and, and also, um, Kevin, will you please say hello to Breda? I know Breda. Uh, yes. Yeah, she's fantastic. She works with the the network, doesn't she? Does so much. She 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 does all the heavy lifting, John. She's Is outstanding. She? Uh, Breda, she it's two E's. Breda. 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 Yeah. 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 She you're, is... all, you're all a credit to the country, Kevin. Well, thank what you, John. You That's very kind. No, absolutely. absolutely. Believe me. There are some astonishing individuals down at the coalface doing the most remarkable work. John's alluded to one of them, Greta. Um, you know, there's, uh, you there's know, astonishing people all over the country that we uh, whose names we don't know. I know, but it's someone like Catherine to, to be uh, an amateur historian. You know, what, no, I now to think, what exactly is going on in my back garden? You know. Or, 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 or in a unca- unca- unconsecrated mm. ground, or wherever you know, it just, it just gives us all. Uh, let's look in our own uh, in our own villages and towns on, on the yeah. back of what those been uncovered in June. So that's what I'm there, saying. It's so, right. so brilliant in relation to what you're doing. So thank well, you very much. Even the Yanks finally had to admit back in the seventies you can't defeat a peasant army, and uh, we're a peasant mm-hmm. army. We're coming from. There you uh, go. Yeah, and uh, we've got the internet now, you know, so they. You know, <laughs> the broadsheet. They can't control the message. You know, they we've got the internet. You know, so they can't control it fully. I mean, they can't for not a while. fully. No, no, no. We um, can't spread all it those away. all those girls and all their children, all their babies. Their stories can be recorded somewhere on the internet. Their yeah. stories will be heard. Yeah. There is a wonderful um, project, by the way, the Clown Project, as in clown, as in family, and it was. Uh, in part initiated by the handful of people, uh, and I mean handful of truly fantastic people who were behind the Justice for Magdalene's program. And much, much of that story has now been digitized and fair play to Mary Daly and the Royal Irish Academy. It's all been uh, placed there. You there? That's great. Thank you, yeah, Kevin. Cool, the boss. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Good night, Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night, Kev. Good night, Kev. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Very nice guy, isn't he, Kevin? He's very yeah. funny. Isn't he? Yeah. Very <laughs> informed, very witty, very funny, you know. That's Extremely it's, funny. It's the, the polite lead balloon I heard earlier on. Yeah, well, did you see he had uh, Beats by Dre or Beats by, <laughs> Beats, Beats by Barbie? It was like... Uh, well, according to I the think, chapel, I think it could have been Hey Beats by the Sound Actors. Just there, um, I've, I've, I've been trying to follow the chaplet on my phone and it's impossible, but those bits I did pick up, they did think the headphones were the problem with that sound. Ah, right, okay. So they were like Bluetooth jobs. Text. I think they were referring to thinking they were more cheap headphones. <laughs> I, don't know if it, I don't know if Shane is in the mosh pit, is she? I didn't see her, but I, I, I'll okay. try and get it up again. It's just very difficult at the moment. No, I, I just, I, um, 
China's in abroad at the moment, uh, and there was a story in the Irish Independent yesterday that the P PPNSI they, they dropped the charges against. Do you remember, the, do you remember Shana was the juror in the in the? Yeah, no, she's not there, but I could probably get a message to her. No, but it looks like they're not going to charge Shana with anything. That's good. That's great. Yeah, it's brilliant. Bad news for the Irish Times, but I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, maybe next time. <laughs> good news for Shana, though. Fair play, Shana. Great, Shane. Great news for Shane. Luke Brennan, hello to, to Luke. Hey, Luke. Yeah, it's brilliant. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Henry Kelly. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm, do, I'm doing my best to uh, uh, struggle yeah. against 30 degree heat here, you know. With, uh, you know I, have to, I have to buy some anti frizz agents for my hair or something like that. I'll be, <laughs> our, 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 well, like, can I, we, can I we, we say something? Like, oh, can no, I tell yeah, you go something for it. about hair and Longford, right? <laughs> I went. Sorry, Luke. You know, I went to Longford at the weekend. To yeah, see, yeah. I, saw uh, a picture of the I was there as well. Remember that, Vanessa? Uh, I, I, <laughs> With no hair, no hair problems. Johnny had no hair it's issue. Like there, it's like Longford. A, it's no here. <laughs> more, more than two people can enjoy, can enjoy Longford at the same time. Is that right? Yeah, John, Johnny was with me. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, but I, I got my hair done on Friday and um, Marco. yeah, and then of course, as I was driving, fucking rain arrived. So I checked straight into the, I was checking into the hotel with the ba bag over my head and I didn't leave the hotel until the taxi picked me up until seven o'clock the following evening. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> And to be honest, that's a good job because uh, uh, she also made a show of herself inside the <laughs> And uh, uh, I looked, I looked at one point, I looked out into, like, uh, like we're describing, it has this rack seating. Rack seating means it goes up like a wall in front of you. And so I've got a completely black uh, theater in front of me, except for one. Uh, one person's face is illuminated. And, and if anybody works in theater or works in shows or whatever, this is, the, this is the person on the phone, you know? <laughs> and, uh, they totally don't recognize the fact that there's a light on the phone and you're the only one in the theater with your, he your, with your face illuminated. Oh, could and, uh, it's on the phone to write the show. So who is, yeah, so who, so who is that? No, no, well, no, no, sorry, can I, can I explain? <laughs> she was writing a review. She was writing a review. I was, I, I, I was I was actually after recording your your arrival onto the stage, you know, right. and I was tweeting yeah. it like live tweeting for broadsheet and right. Stephen Garland, right. and anyway, there was no fucking signal there anyway. But and next was I hear, oh that's Vanessa, and then I just go, oh <laughs> shit, <laughs> and the whole place just goes, ah, oh, starts laughing like oh shit, you <laughs> know, you know. I didn't know what was going on, but I anyway. Pull you up. Uh, a, lone, a lone face in a black uh, theatre of 200. I, I, I won't do it again now. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Lesson learned, uh, Vanessa. And if I, forget, if I did nothing, then I did that. Sorry. <laughs> Johnny, I was going to... Sorry, Luke. Luke, yes. I'll come, I'll come back to Johnny's like, Luke, hello. Luke. Yeah. Uh, and how are things in Portugal? Good, great. Yeah, no, everything's uh, everything's going very well. Like I said, the, the the weather is hit. I don't know if you had your your weather guy on earlier on, but uh, so as somebody was telling me this evening, actually, like all the peculiar weather we've been having has been because of a cyclone that's been in around the Azores, and that's what's messed up the weather in Europe all through the last three months. But that's changed now, and so everything's back to normal. So oh, is uh, it? Yeah, yeah. So oh, go on, uh, just the... up to. The really hot days then well i think you know ireland getting better weather than portugal is over for a while oh, uh, nice. so <laughs> but um i, I went uh, i went to the lovely train journey you can take up the the duro valley um and uh, i did that uh, last weekend well but the town i went to at the end of it like this weekend it's going to be 42 degrees there so you know wow. that's only two hours away in the train so it's yeah it's it's um it's a bit of change 42 degree i mean you can't go out in that no you know, yeah. once it gets over, oh, I try it. I I give it a go. Once well, <laughs> once it gets over body temperature, then it becomes. This is uh, because Rio has regular uh, for plus like close to fifty degrees ambient. They say, 
we had this uh, question with the the weatherman one night. With Alan, yeah, S yeah about, about ambient temperature and uh, and real temperature. Wind chill factor. Well, hot chill factor in the in, <laughs> in, in, uh, in terms of winter, and uh, or in terms of summer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so um, it, it's like. Um, it doesn't make the same sense to us here in Ireland, you know. It doesn't. You can. You can. But I always find that it's uh, um, once you get a, once the, the the real ambient temperature temperature gets above your your body temperature, then it starts to affect your how comfortable you are. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, has your um, sorry? I'm just I just got going through the papers. There's a the Irish Examiner. De Plantier evidence tampered with. Yeah, what it's a big one, no? Huh? Is that a surprise? No, but it's 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 official, I guess. Um, uh, are they saying like like what the guards had has been tampered with? Uh, watchdog voices serious concern over missing documents. No evidence of high level. Oh, no, okay. No level evidence of high level high level corruption. Um, the policing watchdog has voiced serious concerns over the deliberate tampering with key documents held by Garda relating to the investigation into the nineteen ninety six murder. Sophie just gone 22 to years and they're still trying to in a report published yesterday the Garda commissioner I, we, 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 it must come out earlier this evening did it found no evidence of any high level corruption by Garda as alleged by journalist Dean Daly his partner Jill Tonus and witness Mary Farr um this is that's very like the McCabe stuff you know the, the, there was no corruption but hang on yeah. nobody said corruption you know they said like uh so the report also found that other important guard exhibits connected with the case went missing, including a blood spattered gate taken from close to where must a, a gate. Yeah. How did they lose a gate? How did that the first time? How is it? A, this is the first time we've heard about a gate. Where M M Mr. Toscan de Plantia's body was found, a wine bottle four months after the murder in a field near the scene and a black overcoat, overcoat belonging to Mr. Dean Bailey. Mr. Bailey told the Irish Am examiner he's disappointed, but not surprised. At the finding of the uh, for GS, GSO's G, GSOC report. This, this is just all going to go, be called sloppy police work and no corruption or well, malfeasance. They sort of, they've got this thing where they say, oh, corruption wasn't proved. You know, we, we're shown to be completely dodgy in every department, but, you know, we didn't No, we're, we're, we're shown to have weaknesses in some departments. That's what it's going to be. Right, rather than dodgy. What do you think, Johnny? Um, I don't know. There was an awful lot of journalists that weren't uh, too sure about the uh, inquiry. Only recently they were getting uh, lambasted. But, you know, they seem to have been right again that the, the corruption is just unbelievable and there's no accountability. So, therefore... Um, How do you lose a gate? No, I mean... Continue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Blood spatter uh, gate. By, by, sure. by hiding, I suppose, would be the first way you'd lose it. But was, yeah. does, that, uh, do, does that article say that gate was documented into evidence or is it they've just discovered it somewhere? No, no, it was a blood splattered gate, presumably with. It's a forensic thing. And. Yeah, but uh, when items are entered in as evidence or sent to forensic, they're all given like barcodes or tags or something so they can be traced. Was, was Bailey? That case. Sorry, yeah, I think it was. I think it was deliberately lost. That's the point. Yeah, was Bailey extradited there recently? Or was that no, they attempted or, to extradite him. He has a case coming up. I mean, that's going to happen in France. Uh, there's yeah. a case taken against him, and yeah. and this report that came out today is not going to do him any favors because he wants to go to the European because he knows the French case is coming up, so he wants to go to the European Union. And go and fight it in the fight in the European Union before it gets to the French case. Uh, you know, Vanessa says, uh, you know, it's mad how this thing has gone on so long. But you know, wherever you stand on it, there's a guy, uh, you know, that's try that's fighting to uh, either uh, protect his innocence or stay out of jail for that length of time, and uh, that's why it's gone on so long, surely. Gemma O'Doherty mentioned uh, um, this case in, in her speech, the speech she gave a couple of weeks ago that has been 
absolutely phenomenal in terms of the, the how much it's been shared. I think it's one of the biggest um, biggest stories we've had certainly this year anyway. Um, and she mentioned that the possibility that it could have been a, 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 a person attached to the guards who's now dead. Yeah. But, um, I'd never really, I'd never actually heard that before, and I. I, I I, I was doing McGill at the time of the murder, or the, at least we covered the murder. We did a kind of a cover story on it, but uh, I don't remember hearing that rumor. Dad, you heard that, Vanessa? Well, I, I think the general consensus was that they didn't want one of their own going down for, uh, you know, somebody even from the locale. Okay, but... but not necessarily but, someone connected to the guards. But had you heard more, uh, than, uh, more than just a rumor that Sorry. You had heard this as more than just a rumor. Have you had heard this over the years from? Yeah, that uh, any uh, um, as long as it wasn't one of them. Now, one of them in Cork could be the parish or the club or the you know the workplace or. Right. Yeah, they they went over it. But to be fair, Morris is it Morris Buttermer is his solicitor is um. Sure. He's the guy I'd want on my side, definitely. Um, he he um, represented um, was it Wayne the boy from Middleton that accidentally killed that kid? Uh, okay, yeah. Um, just to, on on this then, uh, sorry, Luke. Yep. Um, the, do you, would you know how to if I share the controls with you? Would you know how to sh to show up the newspapers if I? Um, I don't, no. but I'll give okay. it a go. No, no, that's fine. Fine. Stephen, would you? <laughs> uh, I would say no. Okay. Johnny, no. <laughs> you don't know. Either. Vanessa, you don't know either. I can do text messaging. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Anyway, the papers are up and... Uh... So we, we just, I'll just go to the, the yeah, main... Can... We go to the main board. Yeah, if you go... If you, okay, and then can you call that up on your, on your screen? Oh, if you know what I mean. Know. Try. Uh, I don't know. Google there's some very there's some good stories. The Ryanair. Um, it's the big one. Passengers face more chaos in new strike. Uh, I currently have, I think, eight Ryanair flights in the in the offing. <laughs> you have? Yeah, I was going to ask. I mean, I'm sure. It's... <laughs> I literally have eight of them because I'm going off on a, a wee tour into Europe after Edinburgh, oh, and so sad. they're all Ryanair flights, and I think I did the whole lot for under. 150 200 euros something like that so you know yeah maybe, maybe it's not going to happen uh, luke uh, no i was just gonna say just say uh, i was looking at your tour dates uh, uh, just this week Stephen, and i was thinking uh, i'll do my best to try and get over for barcelona not so far and you'll find uh, there's a thousand people it's the fastest response i ever had from any city where i've gone here do you want to do you want to uh, do you want to i had the entire program built and i said mm. do you want to do it and then it was only when I got into the local industry and then I met so much... Uh, resistance? So, re no, not resistance, so much bitching. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and I just went, you know what? Uh, I've yeah. been through this in Spain for years. Yeah. Obviously, it might have given me two or three lesions. Am I going to Lisbon for another, yeah. for another lesion or two? Yeah. <laughs> so I said, you know. Um, yeah. Guys, can you see my screen there now? Yes, we Vanessa, um, we can. You look fantastic, Vanessa. You look great. <laughs> love the lovely backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> I love your frizzy hair. <laughs> that humidity yeah. still is... Uh, Sorry, can you not see the screen there? No, the, oh. the, the newspaper's not up there, no? No, no. Just you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, That's sorry. Ah, yeah. here. That's fine. You're but we can read the news, Vanessa. We can see them in the reflection in your glass, in your <laughs> spectacles. <Yeah. laughs> oh, stop it! I ha I thought the screen screen share. Okay, now. Oh, Is that? What's that like? Is that the? No, no, no. no, 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 no. Has drawn our attention to the reflection in your glasses then we have nothing else to you know that's <laughs> sorry is there is there <laughs> you, do, you don't else. have the car you don't no. have the newspapers up there okay well it didn't no. work sorry no. folks that's sorry okay. sorry we everybody gimp, we got a gimp hiding behind the couch mm -hmm. that's we we um well that's a, okay that's a pity isn't it we this doesn't happen with vincent brown <laughs> <laughs> nothing happens on vincent brown 
No. <laughs> but this is not. What happens when Vincent Brown stays this, on Vincent Brown? This is not number. This is number what seventy six, John. Uh, this is episode number seventy six. Yeah, and I are you? Yeah, I, and I still don't know how to share the t the, the covers of the papers to. Well, he, who where's Neil? Our, where's our producer? Yeah, who's well, I, I think we, we I think we need to do a, a CPD. You know, who, who's uh, in charge here? A CPD day, and we all learn how to do. It. We we need to do that. Um, what 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 I wanted to say about Neil is that uh, he didn't show up, but I'll, I'll he's go. Shirking. He's shirking his responsibilities. I'll go away in Germany. I think. With um, her family, um, and uh, who else? Good and tag, I'll go. Oh, Marcel Kruger has taken a week off to, uh, to, to re <laughs> rethink the book club. <laughs> that was so dramatic. To re re okay, can uh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll deputise for for Marcel. So, you know, John, you, you know, were supposed to do a book, but John and Luke, you were supposed to do a book. So, do, do, um, do, you know, do you know what I was thinking actually about the book club? I was thinking that, <laughs> like the whole thing of like you know uh, the Irish thing. One of the nice things about Portugal, uh, and I'm sure like you know Stephen's experience in Spain was similar, like that. There's a much, there's a great connection, you know, down here to Africa and further afield, you know, uh, and it's a really nice thing to be sort of uh, like, you know, hearing stories and sort of meeting people from all around the place and, uh, you know, restricting the book club to just Irish books. Do we not know enough about ourselves already? Yeah, no, we don't. Well, we do, but we, we, want, we want to just... We're very parochial. I'm sorry, Luke. <laughs> it's a local. I, I, I think, I think for local the... People. I think for the next I raised eight, this before, Luke kept a chance. I think maybe for the next, well, it's just started. We just embargo it on Irish writers and Baby Irish steps. publishers for 12 months and give the Paddies a chance and then yeah. open it up. Yeah. Open up the borders. Well, Luke, we will. We will. But um, seeing as we're kind of talking the arts, how's your the old etchings have you got one to show us uh, yeah. uh, i don't think so i i, I haven't i haven't uh, there's, there's nothing oh. particular i've been doing the last uh, well i, I actually you promised last, last week didn't you you said well, you last week I well, he, he did share it with us john after you tagged out yeah oh no but but, but not on um where is not it on, uh, not up to the public no yeah no I'll, 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 I'll do is i'll dig that out uh, i have it somewhere he, 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 distracted there very quickly or very handily or swiftly or sneakily Luke did you do a book for this week I didn't no no um, John did you do a book yes I did great love to hear it oh um, no well I know because Marcel is uh, he's reconfiguring the whole book club he's, he's oh you're, you're you're saving yourself well it, he, he, he's writing the book he's currently saving. writing the book for the book club I hate to say it, it's a very, very big deal for Marcel, you know, so. <laughs> I, can, I went to the pictures last night in our club. Did you? The pictures? Yeah. yeah. There's, well, there's, an, there's an archaic you know, term. So we're lucky, we're lucky kombulas. But, Were they moving? Uh, oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's your, ah, uh, look it. You're cocky now that you've had, you've got your review out of the way now. You, see, you don't have to piss anybody off. You're two, uh, two thumbs up. I went to see Mamma Mia too. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you liked? Do you know I I, I Me this, too. Well, I went. I went to see. It was awful weather here yesterday, and when the weather is really bad, it's okay when it's raining, but when it's windy, it's you you get cabin fever. So just booked the pictures and we went we went to the pictures and um i was kind of at the start i was already rolling my eyes oh jesus i have to sit through this but there was scenes then that were brilliant and it was you, very quirky you liked the you first know? one didn't you Beth? i liked the ending of the first one yeah uh the, when the titles went up and i have to admit when the titles went up on this one um I it was my favorite part as well, but there was little moments in it that were very quirky. And there was a one point in the cinema, in, uh, in, like if Stephen's given out about me with the phone, right? <laughs> you know, Cher is in it, okay? And you know, Andy Garcia is in it. And when Cher makes her big grand it's entrance. There's one singer in it. To sing. <laughs> my favorite Abba song is Fernando, right? And next one, Fernando starts and Cher comes up, all shared up. And I say, ah, Stuff. You know, it was just 
at that point it just got too much you know? <laughs> like good or bad or just too just, much it was a do you know, do you know in the Wolf of Wall Street when it just gets so much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it goes further again, like the plane yes. fucking crashes, you know, yeah, yeah. the boat crash, the boat sinks and they're rescued, and then the plane that's coming to collect them crashes. Do you know, yeah, it, it was yeah, just yeah, a bit yeah. like that. It, it was just yeah. they, they just went they just went for it. And it, it's it the other thing which colours. I was watching another movie last night and it was all it's grey and black and browns. And it was okay, just, yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. nothing but colours. And um, yeah, it, it, is, it is very quirky. And as you say, they, let, they, they just absolutely went for it. And yeah. you, you can't, uh, there, there, there is one, uh, one of the dance scenes is Waterloo. And it's brilliant. Um, literally every colour, every age, every minority, every, every walk of life, as I'd say, Right. is in this scene, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, okay, okay. they yeah. really, they really put a lot into it for something so simple. John, yeah. John, John if, if, if you Please want, uh, I've actually located uh, that painting, if you want to see it. Please. So, so, so this, this is just like a view in oh. the back window there that, that I uh, put, you know, I just oh. sketched up there. So uh, it just, it's nice, like there's a nice sort of uh, like yellow glow and this sort of evening light here, you know, and, you know, they're actually like, Porto is very famous, or, you know, for, it's got two sort of uh, world famous architects whose names I can't remember, but like generally the class of architecture is pretty high and it sort of takes the light well. So there you go. Beautiful. That's lovely. That, I mean, you really, really, really come on, uh, Luke. Thanks uh, so much. Come on, he was always great. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Keep, keep at it, Luke. No, 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 I didn't do that. No, no. <laughs> You're like it's Radiohead. You just get better. Than <laughs> well, it's nice, you know, it's, it's nice to sort of to have time to sort of enjoy something like that and you sort it's of stretch like it. The sun, Luke, is uh, affecting your art. Like, I mean, the sun. Yeah, well, like the, the light, the light. The, the, the light is, is better and it's sort of, you see different things in a, in a you know, you, you see feel, these, you feel in it. a different light, literally, you know. Yeah, you, you, uh, I mean, that's a, yeah, yeah. Like that, that kind of hockney blue, you know the it's, yeah, the blue, the blue yeah. sky. You, you look, yeah. yeah, no, it's it's good fun. Uh, I'm actually thinking over the next while. There's a, there's a there's a film group here that uh, I've been doing a little bit of work with, and uh, I'm, I'm probably going to over the next sort of few months, I'm going to sort of do more work with them, trying to sort of help, uh, just you know, play around. And there's a lot of sort of latent sort of talent here, and I'm just trying to. I found some good accomplices to to try and do some stuff and hopefully uh you know sort of uh, take a step or two in that direction as well definitely um johnny you, you, your plans as we move into august mm. what are, uh, festival wise festival wise um i don't know i want to go knock and stocking last weekend but uh just the there... ski was way way more appealing so i i ended up in longford and uh I don't know how knocking stocking went. That, that 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 was a kind of really kind of you know cool, beatnik bohemian kind of vibe just there on the edge yeah. of the uh, what you call it um, edge of hipsterdom. Yeah, well, you know there is that kind of element in uh, in Ireland. They're not that prominent, you know. The real the real kind of hipsters. The real hipsters, yeah, yeah. But yeah, exactly. Very few then. The do is travelers and all that kind of stuff, you know. Where, where not just know, guys with beards, like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, like you know, sorry, Luke. Luke is a real artist. Yeah, he is. Uh, yes, he yeah, is. no, but there is not a lot of people really come who, on. Uh, who really <laughs> throw in their beard <laughs> and make a big deal about it. And uh, I think they've hijacked the whole beatnik kind of uh, uh, culture. Because I knew the original beatnik, John Sinclair. I brought him on a tour of Ireland, and no one came out to see him. But anyway, we we, we might have him back uh, in October. So I'll keep you posted on that. Festivals wise, no, I'm actually uh, organising, John. You'll have more information as I guess it, but there will be a, a, a something on the, the fringe of the Kilkenny Arts Festival in the, sh in the near future. So it'll be very interesting. Uh, I keep you... Uh, you also got that uh, big gig thought, over in Knock, Johnny. I want to do... I wouldn't say I want to, to knock, on, uh, knock on wood with, with the Knock gig, because uh, I have the biggest jam in the world. Which would in uh, which would bring it back from the, the the gig that didn't happen last year. The biggest jam sandwich. Uh, well, no, uh, not gonna have sandwich. Is this the love? 
the one love. Yeah, the one, one the, love. The one love. Uh, everything that that involves uh, decency and honesty and uh, and, a, and, a, and a future uh, perspective in Ireland, kind of acknowledging that there is people that aren't religious and they're also uh, very interesting and very spiritual people. So I was hoping to get that vibe in the heart of Ireland with John bureaucracy being as it is and the the the, the backwardness of uh, rural Ireland will not allow me to have that gig and also I'm one guy with an idea so yeah. I can only go to festivals that are mainstream and uh, out of my budget but uh, I'm not really no. interested in it. I've well, been like, at the best festivals this, this year so far you have, and I'm you thankful have. for that. So and well, we, we, hunting in August as such. Maybe, well, we might get maybe to the day festivals, yeah? Maybe the picnic Picnic, yeah. No, What's no, no, picnic? no, no, I'm not, I'm not interested in the picnic at all. I've been there for less. Well, I think years. I'd love us, I'd love us to do the show from the picnic or no, one no, of the no. other. No, no, Vanessa, are you kidding me? You mean to tell me that they're, they're no, going to no, pick no. us over Ryan Tuberty? They're going to give us the show over Ryan Tuberty. That's they the kind of festival it is, okay? Ryan Tuberty. Well, Chip, well then they, now. then they make that choice. But if they offered it to us, I'd be down there in a second. I think we should have our own. I think we should have our own little picnic. If you, if you, yeah, I could do yeah. the sandwiches. If you, um, I, inside the picnic, Stephen could do the would corn. They be, would they be virtual corn. sandwiches now, John? Huh? Would they be virtual sandwiches or real ones? <laughs> but I think we should have a proper picnic. You know, who needs the electric picnic? Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, the risk of getting electrocuted. You have well. the acoustic. The acoustic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> unplugged picnic. Yes, the unplugged picnic. Yes. Yeah, with the wireless one. Yeah, exactly. That's quite we'll wireless. Bob, we'll, we'll bring Better. Bob Dylan back to his roots as well, you know. Well, Johnny, Before thanks. Dylan so went to electric. Yep, absolutely. Judas. Um, <laughs> um, still haven't forgiven him Johnny thanks so much uh, for joining us we, we, we will have the b bigger chat next week about this and that yeah because we, 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 we oh, missed you in the first hour you were kind of quiet ah, we had, yeah Kevin Kevin was a, uh, it's a very serious uh, situation that I mean yeah. it's unbelievable ah, he's a great he's a, he was a fantastic guest and uh, yeah. Stephen Absolute pleasure. You're looking brilliant. Uh, good luck in Edinburgh. Uh, you, you'll 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 co contact us from Edinburgh, won't you? I mean, sure. Yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm not going to. I'm only there for a week. I'm going on the 17th to the oh, 28th, okay. which is so which is, is that the, last the 17th week. of August. Yeah. Yes, the last week. Uh, I'm there to pick up the award, basically, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, so I, got, I want to make sure I'm there for the last week. Yeah. And uh, ah, yeah, look, it's fun. And we're doing something else as well that will that will materialize later, and I'll keep you all in in. But well, Johnny, are you going to um, Edinburgh this year? Because you were there last year with. Um, I know, yeah, Butler. Butler. Stephen is actually hooking up with Butler, you know. Okay, Next well. Comedy. Uh, I want to see. I seen the first one of the tour, and I'm hopefully going to see the last one in Barcelona in September. So looking Brilliant. forward to that. J Johnny, Stephen. A celebrity accountant, Vanessa Foran, thank you so much from her bolt hole in uh, British Bay. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Doesn't sound too bad, man. That's where all the heat's going to hit this weekend. That's down yeah. in the east, southeast, no? Well, today it is, yeah. And it's, t today there was fabulous wind just for sailing and it was sunny as well. They got yeah. some great action out there today. It's fantastic. Uh, oh, oh, actually, John, before you go, can Please I plug look. something? Yes, of uh, course. Uh, this weekend, uh, I think it's on Saturday. It's on Saturday. Uh, my mother is is hosting a, 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 a ceramic event in Wicklow. So she it, it, it's down at her cottage. It's just uh, it's off uh, like near Woodenbridge Hotel, just in around Arklow. Uh, and uh, like her website is helendebrennan.com. So like all the information is there. But what it is is it, it's a, a raku uh, firing event. So basically, there's this method, Oriental method of of glaze firing that is very immediate, and you can sort of people come along. Basically, get a pot, throw it in. The glaze fires automatically. There's all these beautiful colors, and uh, that's on this Saturday. So uh, oh. yeah. I think your brother did an amazing video of of your mum at that, didn't didn't he? Uh, yeah, well, it wasn't that particular technique, but he made he made oh. a video of, of her work, whatever. And it was actually she was doing a Chinese. She was doing a Chinese method of. of yeah, well, like pretty much all the like uh, you know, sort of the 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 ceramic traditions she works from are, are, are Oriental in origin, you know, because Japan okay. is the 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 home of it all. I mean, Korea before that, but yeah, Japan really, yeah. Um, but um, 
Yeah, they, they actually showed that. Uh, my brother went down with my mum in uh, was it in May to uh, the what you call it, the the film festival down in school. Um, the, um, and uh, like they they screened it down there. So that was that was a, a great weekend out for them. Brilliant. Okay, look, uh, we we'll, we'll put that up on the site tomorrow. Um, about Free uh, with John. Luke's can I ask when the when the, the country's best ceramicist? Sorry, uh, Vanessa. Sorry, can I ask when are we going to actually talk about the presidential election? Never. When um, we we'll talk next week, if you like, we we'll try and get Gavin Duffy and um, <laughs> Joan Freeman, and Jerry Adams. Who else is going? Evan O'Quaid. Is Evan O'Quaid. Evan Sean Gallagher. Um, is, he, is he running? Oh, he's, well, who's he's the looking. Who's the Sinn Fein candidate? Not announced okay. yet, Johnny. You have to calm your, calm your debts. Well, well, I, I, I heard a Crowell. rumor now. Senator Crowell pulled out, though, didn't he? Crockwell. Yeah. Do you know, that's the funny thing about this is why I want, it's, it's all about who isn't running. No, I'm actually not running, Miriam. You know, it's. This is it. Um, I well, mean, even, even at the weekend, they had David Hall. Doing a big speed. No, I'm not running. That's John, 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 are you I, running? I, I will. I will actually. I will actually. This year. I mean, why I will, not? I'm hoping for your vote in November. If, um, well, I would. Uh, I would vote for you, John. So you've got okay. my vote. Thank you very much. Um, you, need, you need 20 councils, though, John. I think. Well, no. Okay. There's another way. There's another way to get on the ticket. It starts here. Money. It starts here. Yeah. You know, Johnny, you're always you're always talking about money, Johnny. You know. Oh uh, yeah, that's me. We, we're the, we're the, we're gonna do we're we're gonna do it for the people, people. But maybe, maybe at Crowd the end, maybe we could do a show in it. And I'm not saying, but I did have some small part to play in the election of Michael D. Higgins. I will I will uh, give you some evidence on that. Now, John, if we, if did we, you, uh, did if you we do go there, were you the fake tweeter? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I was I was there in the studio that night. Were you? In the, in the Pat Kenny studio, but that's not the evidence that I have. Oh. I, was pulled, I was pulled. Oh, so you, the so base, you did. I decided that if I actually go that route, Michael D will not become president. So I says I will not ask that question. <laughs> no, that's, this, this is true yeah. information. That's an exclusive there for the BS. Brilliant, brilliant. But we would save it for the special then. The R is special. That. You could have changed yeah. the course of history. Thank you so much, uh, Johnny Keenan. All right. Thank you. I'm out of here. Stephen Garland, thank you. Hey there, guys. In Longford. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Thanks, a lot. Thanks a lot for the, uh, the, the host disposed on the web today. So thank yeah. you a lot. And thanks to Vanessa for the writing the review. Yeah. Good night, lads. Thanks, Stephen. Night, night. Five star review. Johnny Keenan, thank you very much. Uh, we'll speak John. next week. Uh, Luke Brennan, beautiful painting. You're really you're coming on a storm there. Leaps, leaps and bounds. Leaps. <laughs> And we will have Helena's stuff on the site tomorrow. Thank you very much, Luke. Uh, Vanessa Foran. Good night, uh, everybody. Curtis Bay. Thank you very much. Uh, and for me, John Preposterous Ryan. We hopefully see you on the site tomorrow. Um, otherwise, uh, here next week. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awkward silence.